So namaste everyone. Welcome to our yoga class today. So we are actually going to start in a reclined position. Um, you're welcome to start to make your way there while I read our waiver. In order to make these classes as freely accessible as possible to our participants, we will be using a verbal warning and assumption of risk at the beginning of the class. Participation in this online class is voluntary. Physical activity programs may result in injury, and by participating, you assume the risk of injury that may result from your participation. We strongly recommend that you participate from a space that is suitable for this activity. For example, make sure that you have moved nearby furniture or other potential hazards. If you are participating in a yoga class or a class that involves laying on the ground, we recommend using a mat or if you don't have one, a carpeted area. Participants are encouraged to stop if they experience pain or injury and should seek appropriate medical advice or care as needed. William & Mary Health and Wellness strongly recommends that each participant have an annual physical exam and follow the advice of your health care provider before participating. So again, welcome everyone. So as you recline down onto the mat, just noticing all the spaces that are touching the mat. Notice all the spaces that are not. The natural curves in the body. Taking a moment to settle in, to let go of the day. Let go of anything that happened before you stepped onto your mat. And also letting go of the things that maybe you're anticipating when you get back off your mat. The focus of today's practice is in grounding as we are in Earth Week. So just noticing the support below you. Again, maybe making some gentle movements to just find some comfort in spaces that maybe are starting to soften. So maybe a little pelvic tilt, just getting the pelvis neutral, maybe wiggling toes, bending knees, rolling ankles. As you're making this gentle movement, just noticing what the joints are telling you. Moving into the upper body, maybe some adjustments of shoulders on the mat, letting the shoulder blades just cross. Maybe movement in the hands, the wrists, the elbows. Maybe a gentle rock of the head on the mat, right and left. And then pausing with the chin in neutral, finding stillness in the body. Notice the breath. Allowing yourself to just notice the natural rhythm of the breath if you're not having to do anything to change as if the body is just breathing on its own. And then allowing yourself to explore expanding the breath. So deepening the inhales, lengthening the exhales, noticing maybe how that shifts and changes the body, making adjustments is needed. Building the breath. And then once you've made your way to your deepest inhale, your longest exhale, start to settle into a rhythm of breath that just feels right for you. No right or wrong to thus. See, inhale that gives you that sense of energy or everything that you need in the body, and that 
Exhale, that brings you to that space of peace and calm. Find that softening. It's easy to find here while we have the earth supporting us. Take a few rounds while you're the total support. So you're familiar with this breath. Adding in that jaggy breath if it feels right to you. And then once you've found that rhythm of breath, you're going to bring the feet to the floor. Knees are going to be facing up. The feet are nice and grounded here. Make any adjustments you need to to bring the pelvis to neutral to keep that spine nice and long. Notice the feet on the floor. Make sure all 10 toes are touching the mat, rounding them in one at a time. Maybe lifting them up and drawing them down one at a time. Make sure the feet are about that hip width distance. Notice as you start to ground the toes into the feet, focus on the grounding. Notice the natural inclination of the abs to slightly engage. Let's draw a little more awareness into that space and really engage the abs. That feeling of the navel lifting up towards the rib cage. See if you can just engage a bit more. And then holding on to that beautiful engagement. Notice what happens as you engage that core. Then from this space, adding some movement in with the breath and the core engagement. Keeping the core engaged. Inhale, lift the hips up. Exhale, lower the hips down. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, lowering down. Three more rounds at your pace, maybe expanding if that feels right. And then after your final round, meeting with the pelvis in the mat. Add in from here, keeping that core engaged. Inhale, lift the pelvis up with the arms up and overhead. Exhale, release back down. Inhale, up. Exhale, everything back down to the mat. Two more times here, inhaling up. Exhaling back down. Last time, inhale, up, pause, hold. Exhale, release, back down. From here, keeping the hands on the mat, palms facing down, spread all the fingers wide here. Finger pads resting on the mat. Nice external rotation of the shoulders. So those shoulder blades are resting. On an inhale, leaving the hands here on the mat, you're going to lift the knees up, hug the knees into the chest, draw the feet back down to the floor. Three more times here. Inhale, lift up, core engaged, draw the knees into the chest, exhale, release the feet mindfully to the floor. Working at your pace with your breath, maybe deepening each time, maybe pausing as you get down back to the mat, making adjustments as needed. Once you have finished here, pause with the feet on the floor, gently rock the knees side to side. Staying in that beautiful breath we created. Then this last time, as you hug the knees up into the chest, you're going to extend the legs up towards the ceiling. From here, you have an option. You can 
bend the knees, bring the feet back to the floor, or leaving the legs long, letting the legs come long down to the floor before you bring the feet up. We're going to do this one for two more rounds, knowing you have options here. Both rounds don't need to be exactly the same. So letting yourself settle into what feels right as you keep that core engaged and keep the spaces that are on the mat on the mat. Honor them. So noticing if things are shifting, make the adjustments. Leaning back with the feet on the floor. Now just hug the knees into the chest and just rock side to side. Giving those abs a little break. But remembering that space as we move through our practice today, keeping that core engaged. Then from here, you have the option to roll to either the right or the left. We're going to transition here. If it feels right to rock on the spine, go ahead and come on up. We're going to transition into a tabletop here. And just take time to set up your tabletop. You have this beautiful awareness of what's going on in your body right now. So spreading the fingers nice and wide. Let the knees be underneath the hips while the hands are underneath those shoulder heads. You're pressing the top up to the feet into the floor. You know that core engagement now. And then on an inhale, you're going to move into your cow, drawing the gaze up towards the top of the mat, getting that nice external rotation of the shoulder and navel reaching down from the mat. Inhale, move right into your cat back. Drawing the spine up towards the ceiling. Tuck that elbows. Moving through cow and cat. A beautiful flow here. Folding in spaces that need a little more attention and then adding in any organic movement here as it feels right. Maybe it's just bumping the hips out to right and left. Maybe it's some cat or cow bows. Listening to what the body needs, listening to what's going on. Noticing all of the joints and then pausing back in stillness here. From this space, we're going to recline down onto our abs. And once we get here, we're going to come into a sphinx for a moment. So our elbows are going to be underneath our shoulders. We're getting some nice lengthening in the spine. The crown of the head is reaching in the direction of the spine. You're just pausing here, getting those abs engaged, noticing what's going on in the low back. And then as you're ready, you're gonna draw the palms to center. Left under right, and then slide the elbows out. You're bringing the third eye to the mat. So we've already strengthened the core. Let's strengthen the back side of the body with a nice little flow for the back side of the body. So from here, we're going to take the hands out and put them underneath our shoulder heads as if we were going into cobra. We're going to do a little cobra flow here. So on an inhale, let's just come right into a little cobra to start. So baby cobra, inhale, spine lengthen, feet are pressing into the floor. Gaze down at the mat. 
Little to no weight in the hands. Sit some air. Exhale, third eye back down to the mat. Adding on to here. From this space, as you inhale, the hands are off the mat. You're going to reach the arms out in front. Keeping the palms down, you're going to draw the hands out to the side and bring them along the side. And then draw the hands back up. Hands under shoulder heads. Hug the elbows in. One more sip of air. Exhale, release down. Two more breath cycles as we move through that. Two more times. Just remembering we're doing this in cobra here. So the tops of the feet are still staying on the floor. Pressing in. You're keeping that beautiful core engagement. You're lengthening the spine. Crown of the head is reaching. So when you're ready, inhaling up, reach the arms out, around, down to the side, and then back up under the shoulder heads. Then on the next exhale, release down. One more round here. Inhale up, almost as if we're swimming a breast. Returning to that cobra, back down to the mat, and then making your way to a child's pose here. Just noticing now both the front and the back side of the body, noticing the breath, noticing the core engagement. Then from this child's pose, Reaching the arms out in front, let's walk the hands over to the right side of the mat, bumping out the left hip. From here, taking maybe the left hand, placing it on top of the right, fitting the posture just a little bit. Where is that core engagement? Where is that strength in the spine? Walk the hands back to center, pause and center, and then move over towards the left side now. Same thing on the left side, you're gonna bump that right hip out, maybe right hand comes to the top of the left. Breathe. Then drawing hands back to center, pause and center. And then tuck the toes, lift the hips, find your first downward dog practice. So adding a little bit of movement here into our dog, coming up high on the toes, maybe rocking back and forth if that feels right. Maybe a little walking of the dog here. Maybe we even walk our dog and bump our hips out. Noticing what's going on, making our downward dog a little more active, maybe shaking the head yes and no. And then pausing in center, core engaged, nice, beautiful, strong back, start to sink the heels back towards the mat, pausing, relaxing the neck, Knees down at the mat. And then mindfully making your way to the top of the mat, you're going to start to walk with the right foot. You're going to find a forward fold here. Abs are resting on the quads. You're going to draw the hands to the shins. Find that half left. Exhale, release. Reach the arms out to a T, reverse the swan. Come all the way up, hands up and overhead, hands through heart center, samasthiti. Releasing the hands along the side. 
setting up your mountain pose. Just noticing as we come to standing, that core engagement, that beautiful long spine. We're gonna add our third little flow in here. Remembering all these pieces of our practice today. Not only can they be done together, but as individuals as needed. Grounding us when we need it. So on an inhale, we're gonna sweep the arms up and over high. We're gonna draw the palms together. We're gonna to find that steeple mudra, so all the fingers are interlaced. So for the index. We're gonna to heel to the feet a little closer together if you'd like to make this a little more balanced pose. And then you're just gonna rock side to side, opening up the side body. Starting out just very gently, but if it feels right to move to one side and hold a little longer, go ahead and go there. Making sure you offer the same to the other side. And then as you're ready, making your way back to stillness in the center, you're going to float the hands to heart center. And you're going to return to your mountain pose. This time we're going to inhale, left the arms up and overhead. Take the gaze up towards the palms. Make sure the palms are facing each other from the gaze back to neutral. Let the shoulder blades relax. Shift the weight in the feet into the heels. Engage the core, lift up all 10 toes. And then just gently set back into your chair. If this is too much on the shoulders, you can always bring the hands to heart center or reach the arms straight out in front, palms still facing each other. Wherever you're at, nice external rotation in the shoulders, core engaged. Come down one more inch and then fold. Hold forward, nice long back here. Maybe start reaching the crown of the head towards the floor. Your abs are resting on your quads. Inhale, take that half left. Exhale, release. Arms out to the side. Come on up, reverse your swan. Hands through heart center. All right, adding on here. So from this space, we're gonna reach the arms up and over head. We're gonna sit back into our chair. So that nice bend in those quads, hinge at that hip crease, tall, tall spine, core engaged, start to come forward with the abs on the quads. Long back, resting chest and abs on quads, knees bent here. You're welcome to stay right here or start to lengthen the legs. Moving in and out of that, bending the knees, feet are resting on the mat. Moving with your breath. On your next round, push into the floor and make your way back to chair. Pressing into the feet, come on up to Samasthiti, hands at heart center, and then find mountain. Two breath cycles here. On an inhale, lift the arms up and over head. Exhale, sit back into your chair. Inhale, you're gonna start that slow forward fold. Abs are coming down to the quads. Starting to maybe release the head towards the floor. Placing both hands on the mat, you're gonna step back to a plank. You're gonna lower the knees, come onto the tops of the feet, lower all the way down. Find that cobra, long, long spine. Exhale, 
release, press up into either tabletop or plank, and find your downward dog. Two breaths here. And then with awareness of the left foot, mindfully making your way to the top of the mat, you're just finding that forward fold as transition here. Reaching the arms out to the side, you're coming all the way up, reversing the swan. Hands to heart center, so on the Find your mountain. So add on to here, knowing you're welcome to deepen or stay where we were at. So if you're coming along for a little bit more, we're gonna step out to the sides just a little bit. Your feet are a little wider than hip width distance. On an inhale, you're gonna lift the arms up and overhead. Exhale, you're gonna sit into a wide chair here. From here, you have options. You can come into a forward fold, or if you'd like, Turn the toes out towards the side of the mat and set into a yogi squat. From here, you have options. Staying right here, placing hands on the floor, start to move in and out the forward fold and yogi squat. Couple rounds here. And then from this space, the next time you're in yogi squat, you're going to use your core strength, that nice long spine. You're going to push into the feet. You're going to come all the way up, heel to the feet so that the toes are facing the front of the mat, and then find your mountain pose. Two breath cycles here. So adding on from here, knowing that you can take that yogi squat out if it feels like it's too much for you, or add a little bit more as we move through. Inhale, lift the arms up and overhead. If you're coming into that yogi squat, you're gonna make sure that your feet are a little wider. Exhale, we're all sitting into chair. So whether it be just a little wider or normal chair, if you're coming into yogi squat, you're gonna heel to the feet out. Coming into yogi squat or forward fold. Adding that movement in, if it feels right. From here, either staying in yogi squat. If crow is in your practice, you're welcome to stamp into crow right now. So, drawing the elbows, bending at the elbows, drawing the knees in. If that's not your choice, you can stay in your yogi squat. Then placing the hands on the floor wherever you're at, you're either gonna jump back or step back to a plank. Lowering the knees or moving into up dog. You're gonna lower down if you're staying on your knees, cobra. We're all gonna meet in down dog. Two breath cycles here. And then lowering the knees. Finding child's pose. Taking your time while you're in child's pose. Releasing the wrists if that feels right. Bending out the wrists. Maybe making some fists. Coming back to neutral. Mm 
the arm out in front. I'm going to tuck the toes, lift the hips, spine downward dog. Then from here, we're going to take the left leg, lift high in the air. Point the toe, stack the hip. Bend at the knee if that feels right, deepening. Maybe looking underneath the arm to the foot, roll the ankle. Pausing in stillness, lengthen the leg. Close the hip, bring the foot to the floor. Moving to the other side. We're going to take the right leg, left it high, stack the hip, point the toe, maybe bend at the knee, scorpion tail, roll that ankle out. And then straightening the leg back out, turn the hip down towards the mat. Bring the foot to the floor. Lower the knees. Take a cat and a cat. And then make your way to child's pose. Our last little flow of practice will be a hip opening flow. So as you're ready, reaching the arms out in front, tuck the toes, lift the hips, find that down dog. Lifting the right leg into the air. You can stack the hip and find that scorpion tail if that feels right. Meeting back in that three-legged dog, you're going to draw the knee in towards the rest as we find our pigeon. And this pigeon is going to be a nice active pigeon. So if you need to place something under the left hip, go ahead and go there now. You want to make sure right and left hip are nice and even. The toes on the right leg are pointing towards the back of the room. And then on an inhale, that nice core engagement, that nice long spine, just start to lower down to the mat. Coming back and forth, up and down. Moving with your breath. Long spine, core engaged. Hands under shoulder heads, nice bend in the elbows. One more round. Meeting back in your proud pigeon, you're going to tuck the toes on the back foot. You're going to lift the back leg up with that core strength. With that straight spine, you're going to lift that left leg up, reach it behind. Maybe go into that scorpion tail again if that feels right. Bring that left foot to the floor. Lower the knees. Find either child's pose or hero's pose. Do what you need to to release the wrist or the shoulders if it feels right. To have the hands along the side of the body, go ahead and go there. Checking in with the breath. Two more rounds of breath here. We know where we're going on the other side. So mentally preparing yourself. Reaching the arms out in front. Tuck the toes, left the hips. Find your downward dog. Reaching that right leg into the air, three-legged dot. Push through that right heel. Maybe open up. Maybe find that scorpion tail. Making your way back to that three-legged dog. 
Full core strength here. Draw that knee into the rest. Set up your pigeon on this side. So notice that the heel is in the hip flexor. Hands are under the shoulder pads. External rotation in those shoulders. Nice long leg on that left leg. If it feels right, come up onto the toes. Lengthen the leg. Point the toes towards the back of the room. We're going to do the same thing here. Make sure the hips are nice and even. And then long spine coming forward. Back up. With your breath, moving through this. Four more rounds. Core is engaged. After your last round, leaning back in your proud pigeon, getting those hands nice and grounded into the mat. Tuck the back toes, lift the back leg. Use that core strength to lift that right leg back and up. Maybe that scorpion tail again. Then mindfully placing right foot on the floor, knees to the mat, take a cat and a cow. And then swinging the legs to either the right or the left, you're coming down to seated. From here, we're going to start in Sukhasana, just taking a moment. Spine lengthen. We're just going to release the wrists, rolling the hands. The wrists did a lot today. You're going to take a moment to just notice the joints again. Roll the shoulders, move the elbows. Maybe just shifting the hips a little. Notice the spine. Notice that core. That strength, notice your breath. And then just reaching the hands down to the mat in front of you. You're just going to press the hands into the mat as you roll to the back of your sits bones. Let the elbows turn and come in so that the crease in the elbow starts to point up towards the ceiling. Nice external rotation of the shoulders. Just a nice little stretch here. If it feels right to start walking the hands out. You just want to make sure you're staying on the back edge of the sits bones. Long, long spine. Inhale, you're going to walk the hands up, coming back to center. Now, with your core strength, you're just going to switch the legs out, immediately come into that long back. Hands are going to come out in front. You're going to roll to the back of the sit bones and such. Walking the hands out if that feels right. Remember, long, long, long back here. Then walking the hands back, we're going to bring the feet to the floor. Knees are pointing up, the hands are along the side, and we're just going to rock the knees side to side. Then making your way back down onto the mat, honoring your spine. So feet should be at the end of the mat, rolling down. If it feels good to draw the knees into the chest, you're welcome to do that. 
And then meeting with the feet on the floor, knees are about hip distance apart. You're gonna draw the arms out to the T. Pressing the feet into the floor, you're gonna shift the hips over to the left side as you draw the knees over to the right. Coming into this gentle twist here. Couple breaths. Then inhale the knees back up to center. Bring the hips back to center. And then as we move to the other side, you're gonna shift the hips over to the right side while the knees move over to the left. Remember you're keeping your shoulders on the mat. We're gonna keep the gaze up at the ceiling. Then on an inhale, bringing the knees back up to center, shifting the hips back to center, hugging the knees into the chest one last time. And then if it feels right to make your way into a happy baby, coming there, Drawing the feet up towards the ceiling with flexion as if they are walking on the ceiling. Knees hugging in towards the body as if you were gonna tuck them in your armpits. Almost like we're in an upside down crow here. Lengthen the spine one last time. Before you gently release the hands, bring the feet to the floor and let the legs go long as you settle into your Shavasana. Taking the time to notice the subtle differences you created in your body. We started and will end practice in Shavasana today. So just noticing the differences that you created in the last 45 minutes. I'm so thankful to all of you for allowing me the opportunity to walk through practice with you. May you all be happy, may you be safe. And you always walk this earth in loving kindness, with peace, and always at ease. Namaste with ease.